Please. Halloween Kills update. What do you and think not to me? Hey, that was in the same coloring as The Shining. Shit. Shout out to Petty Joe Martin, by the way, for hitting us up on our Facebook and letting us but know this happened. Empire, the UK, the UK version of Empire Magazine. They were an empire. Has a new magazine on the newsstands today if you're in the UK. And they have a Halloween Kills interview in it with David Gordon Green, Ooh. Danny Gordon Green, ah. Daniel Gordon Green. Yes. I fuck it up all the time. With him and David McBride. Eggs Danny and McBride. Fuck! And with, uh, with the uh, green eggs and ham. Creators. David Gordon Green and Danny McBride talked to Empire of the UK, and here's what they had to say. We've talked about this before. How much is John Carpenter going to be involved with Halloween Kills? We yeah. know he showed up on set with Halloween 2018. We know he scored the movie. Oh, I thought they were talking about, like, Your Highness Part 2. Macaroni and cheese. Your Highness Part 2, Danny McBride. <laughs> Come be gay with Father, Father and I. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot from the movie. But, um, no, they talked, to, uh, they talked to these two about the movie, and they brought up specifically what John Carpenter's involvement with Halloween Kills kills is going to be and it's really interesting they had this to say he said although he didn't direct halloween 2 the original halloween uh -huh. 2 he was very involved in the writing of it and he'd asked himself the same questions we've been asking ourselves jay what the fuck what the fuck i gotta jay? go rita repulses attacking <gasps> angel grove that was the sound the flute <laughs> that's the flute from green ranger they said although he didn't direct halloween 2 he was very involved in the writing of it and he asked himself the same questions we've been asking ourselves mm -hmm. how do you continue this but make it satisfying and different we'd also do skype sessions where i'd watch him watch scenes then he'd give feedback he would jump laugh and sometimes thumbs up which for me who grew up on escape from new york and big trouble in little china was pretty incredible Sweet. Dude, the fact that, like, John Carpenter, and this is why this is such a, a big thing to me, John Carpenter is the one guy you can trust you to tell you the fucking truth. Yeah, dude, that guy scares me more than anybody else, but I know he tells me the truth. He'll also be like, by the way, you're fucking ugly and you'll never have a wife. I had uh, one. She cheated on me, but it's true. You've gained weight in quarantine, and, 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 and you're ugly. And you're nasty now. Like, you, you have rosacea on your cheeks because you're drinking too much. Thanks, Calm John. down, you fat fuck. He always delivers the truth. I mean, if he wasn't excited about the movie, they wouldn't mention it whatsoever. Ever. He's the one guy that sometimes they've come to John Carpenter before and they'd be like, why'd you do this? He'd be like, because they paid me. Yeah, that was it. I love that. That There was a question at a Comic-Con, I remember, or, or something like that, when he was asking. He's like, you know what the best part? It was either him or yeah, it was him. So like, the best part about Rob Zombie's Halloween is that I got a chick. <laughs> and I was like, I love that guy. That's great. That's a great fucking response. God damn you, my and, and you know, um, um. I completely lost my train of thought. I don't know what. <laughs> the UK uh, is a great country. Shit, fuck, Florence. Lots of history. <laughs> no, just the fact that John Carpenter would watch scenes and he would thumbs up or jump like he was I love scared. It. Yeah, that's great. That's amazing news. And again, I want to reiterate every single thing we've heard about Halloween Kills, where, whenever it comes out, which I fear is going to be 2021. Uh, what are you going to do on October 31st? But whenever it comes Ooh. out, oh, it hurts me butt. But whenever it comes out, the thing is, is that everything, the test screening, uh, when we talked to Christopher Nelson about it in our interview with him, uh, the people who have mentioned it in interviews and whatnot, I really, really think that Halloween Kills is going to be special. And what a lovely human being Chris Nelson is, by the way. I like his mouth. A very upfront, very nice guy, guy that would take heart. you out and steal your wife, but it doesn't matter because you think he's a great guy and you want to hang out with him. He'd buy what, you a steak dinner. After he did it, yeah, yeah. Of course, that's what you do. That's what gentlemen do. That's right. But yeah, you know, it, look, John Carpenter, again, is, is a stand-up dude, really happy with this news. It's some good news, that, some good news finally in a world full of dark crustaceans on the underwear. Absolutely. We get some good news here. And, and dude, I really just, I hope John Carpenter one day announces that he's gonna reunite with Kurt Russell with one more Snake Plissken adventure. I would be inside of one that. One fucking more. Please, can I have it, sir? Daddy, can I have some sausage? Daddy, Daddy can I have some sausage? Because I would, I would totally, I, I would. Like a back, back, back. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would love it. But anyway. Listen uh, to my hooves. Mm. <laughs> but uh, moving on, they also asked him about, how is this going to be different from Halloween? Like, uh, how are we going to move the franchise in a new direction with this new movie? Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave Gordon Green's answer here was pretty neat, too. He said, the first one was more about Lori's life of isolation after Michael and her attempts at revenge. It was personal. This is more about the unraveling of a community into chaos. It's about how Spear... <laughs> it's about how fear <laughs> spreads virally. <laughs> So let me do that one more I time. I wish to God that you'd been... <laughs> no, dude. If you had been a guy that was interviewing John Carpenter and you messed up the question, you're like, fucking shit! 
<laughs> right, the news like, tonight coronavirus is like, fucking shit, no, Barbara! If you were talking to John Carpenter, like the creator of Michael Myers, something that we base our whole <laughs> mediocre channel on, and you <laughs> fucked up a question, you went, fucking shit! And made that face like you were constipated? What if he was like, I like that young man? <laughs> you know what? He made a mistake and he owned it. I'm a doctor, not a pool man! He owned it in the moment. One more time. <laughs> I said, this is more about the unraveling of a community into chaos. It's about how fear spreads virally. That is mm. fucking awesome because Just like COVID does without a mask. Don't talk about oh. it! Oh! You know, you know in Scream when like after the first killings happen, but poor Steve! And like they go to the high school yeah. and like the camera's panning around and uh -huh. there's all these media people yeah. and the school bus and the kids are talking. Uh -huh. There's like a buzz and they put a curfew in and then Sexy. red right hand plays me good. and the red hair okay. and the guy with the snow. Here I come. It's fucking amazing. Going dry. But if they take, it, it's not just about Laurie Strode in this one and they make it about the whole town, which we know because they're going to be yeah. bringing back other characters and Makes whatnot. Sense. If they give this real fucking aura to Haddonfield where everybody's in a panic and it's not like in the old days where nobody paid any attention. They're like, oh, fuck that COVID. I don't need no mask. And then Loomis comes and like, it's real. It never Your made, own daughter. That never made sense to me. It really didn't. I love the Halloween movies. They were always great. Like the and you know the Friday Thirteenth and Nightmare on Elm Street. But like a massacre happened, and then like a few years later, like anyway, uh, you go to the prom. <laughs> like it's like nothing <laughs> happened, and then Lubus out here he's like, you don't have a police thoughts. Like this drunk <laughs> fucking uh, psychiatrist is the only one making sense, and everybody else like, what do you mean there was a murder? Like I must have missed that because I was watching Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix, <laughs> which is great by the way. It's gonna be nice to see the whole town like up in arms about this and actually that taking it seriously it and it's going to really add to the movie so that's really nice and then the other piece of news that came out today was another John Carpenter statement which I will gladly show you now cut. Carpenter told IndieWire in an interview he said the cut is done they'll mix it in which we knew a little bit about and he said they'll mix it in New York in the next week or so then it will be in the can my work is all done the Sweet. movie is something else it's fun intense and brutal a slasher movie times 100 big time it's huge it's huge I've never seen anything like this. The kill count. Guys, I can't, I, and again, we and already, he said that. that. That's what John <laughs> Carpenter <laughs> fucking John said. John Carpenter said it. That, like, I know that Stephen King, and God bless Stephen King, I love him, but when when any fucking, someone could fart in a can, be like, Stephen King, I made a movie, he'd be like, it's great! <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said, if he farted in a can, it's like, hey, Stephen King made a movie, it's called uh, fucking Maximum War Drug. <laughs> ah, yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but Stephen King, you know, like, when his works come out, he always talks him up and whatever, and I realize that John Carpenter's a producer, but again, if John Carpenter did not like this movie or think it was special, which John Carpenter is like, Harder to please than my own father. He is so hard to please. What an asshole. He's coming out. Huh? With I love Am my I right? Dad. Am I, I right, Dad? <laughs> I'm kidding. But no, wait, wait. John Carpenter is so hard to please. For He's not only talking about this movie, he's fucking gushing over it, dude. I love it. I'm telling you guys, everything we've heard about this movie, and I feel like we're about to get to this point for when it's going to come out, but nonetheless, everything we've heard about its fucking quality is top notch. When it does come out and we finally get to see it, man, Halloween Kills is going to blow your fucking tits off. That's right, man. It's going to make you constipated for a week and you're going to wonder why, but you're going to say it was a good time and I had a great time at the steak, sh steak uh -huh. and shake before I seen the movie. We're but going this to is Sizzler. What, it's John Carpenter, man. It's John Carpenter saying that he was fucking impressed with a kill count. You know, you gotta be doing something real right if the master of horror, one of the masters, okay, not the master, but the one of the masters of horror, he's sitting there like, damn, did I do something illegal? Like when he's driving away, when he watched the rough cut, he's like, fuck me. Like, because you know, like that's cool though, man, that's awesome. Yeah. And he, and he, and, and, and the fact that he's saying that he was really impressed with it, that it, it does a really good job exploring them. He didn't say that specifically, but you can read between the lines. <laughs> but no, he was saying that, uh, you know, the mythology is expanded on and they're doing a great job and he has like a lot of trust and, and uh, hope for David Gordon Green and his vision. That's an amazing piece yeah. of news. And it's it really, it, you again, up, man. It, it just makes us all a lot more... I mean, we were all excited about another Halloween. It doesn't matter if Buster Rhymes came back with a Dorito can and was going to still fuck up Michael. That would suck asshole, don't you ever think it? But I would still be like, it's a Michael Myers I'm movie. watch it. Yeah, so the fact that, that like, you know, this is this praise is coming from yeah. John Carpenter himself is great news. Uh, I can't not, wait. Dude, I can't wait for 2025 when this movie gets out. And it's going to be amazing. I've not heard a single you ready? unkind word about this fucking movie, and that includes from the test audience. The only unkind thing someone said in the test audience was, it's just too gory, I wish it was less gory. And then, based off of that, some people were like, well, I don't want a movie that's all gore, that's not Halloween's about. But I oh. also heard that the movie's extremely emotional, and that the, the, the character development is, like, forefront and center, so that quells that immediately. I've never, guys, I'm like, I, I would fucking bet a lot 
I would bet a lot of money that Halloween Kills is gonna fucking blow ass. No, that's not what I meant to say. Ooh. I mean, it's gonna blow you away. Blow the ass. Dead serious though. Away. Man, I think Halloween Kills, when we get to blow see Blow you away. 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 God. Away. We're gonna totally blow this guy. <laughs> Lick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> but comment down below with your all thoughts. Well, hold on. Yeah, uh, what? Let me say one more thing. What? Why'd you spill your beans? Oh, <laughs> that's actually what I was gonna say. It was a little fucking, uh, it's, it was kind of like a quote from uh, Robert Pattinson. We don't know what's gonna happen in the future with this movie. We have no idea. Like, hopefully it comes out this year, but if it doesn't, if it's slated for next year, it does, it does. But if I could get my hands on this movie right now, if I could watch it, I would fuck it. I would fuck it. I would fuck it. I don't care. Raw, I don't care. <laughs> if I could get my hands on a steak right now, I. I'd fuck it. Dude, I just like how nonchalant he said it. <laughs> I'd fuck it. <laughs> it's like, you liked me cooking at least, eh? <laughs> you fancy me lobster. You liked it. Oh, we love your fucking faces. Comment down with those your all's thoughts on all this that we spread out for you. You may have the supper. No one called you, but it's here for you now. Deluxe shit doors. <laughs> Bring your mask with you, piece of shit. We'll see you guys <laughs> next time on Geraldo Rivera's Biggest I secrets. can't wait to get there. <laughs> Oh, fucking bitch and whores. <laughs> Look at this. It spilled my hands. What are you gonna do on October 31st? What are you gonna do on October 31st? Here comes that white faced fucker, an asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit. Wants to stab your sister's tits cause he's a white faced fucker. Loomis can't recover. Dr. Challenge drunk again. Sleeping with your sister's friends. Do you wanna know about the darkness? I said, God damn. A lot of people don't know the darkness that goes inside their hearts. I said, God damn. God damn you, Michael! What are you gonna do on October 31st?